were drinking Union, and it tasted so shitty, we had to drink glass. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this, is, this is a commercial for our uh, let's say uh, most uh, most uh, most valuable drink here uh, here from uh, Lashka. Same same director, same uh, same company, but two different brands of uh, beer. I know, I'm kidding. Yeah, our driver likes Union, and so just to make joke against him. Uh, I say we like Lasco. <laughs> he loves that joke. Uh, first of all, it's real privilege and honor to host you here on the first annual uh, Fun Pro Holiday. Uh, you you had uh, some uh, some problems uh, by getting here, but uh, now you're all you, you're all here. And what are the feelings after the show, after the meeting the crowds of uh, first festival Fun Pro Festival here and uh, having uh, having played gig and uh, enjoying Slovenia again? Everybody is great, man. Like, everybody treating us really good, and we're having a blast, man. Like, sounds good, you know. Beer's good, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, it's really cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. We're happy to be here. It's really, uh, it's fun. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you are, uh, you are now uh, celebrating the second anniversary. Uh, yeah. yeah. It means uh, like uh, twenty. Two years of surviving and uh, doing uh, doing punk stuff uh, as it should be done. Uh, how, how do you uh, feel about the evolution of the band and the idea of uh, Total Chaos right now in New Millennium? <laughs> Believe me, every year we uh, we just improvise. We just go with whatever we feel like. I don't know. I mean, nowadays we've been around for so long. I don't care what anybody thinks. We just do whatever we want. You know. And that's kind of the way it is. is the new way. album, the new album is a lot different from our last record, and um, it's more. It is a little bit more melodic, you know. The new album. It's kind of mixed. Yeah. Battered and smashed is a little more melodic than the last album. The last album was just straight up old school punk, and this one's like mixed with stuff. We even put some reggae jams in it. I don't know. We just improvise nowadays. I don't care, you know. I mean. Like, uh, we're friends with uh, Noah Fax, and at this point, even that Mike told me, he's like, dude, we've been together for 30 years, I don't care anymore, I just do whatever I want, and that's it, I don't care. They like it, they like it, they don't like it, fuck it. And I think I'm in the same position nowadays with that Mike, you know. I don't care anymore, you know, I just do whatever I want, and hopefully the kids like it. If they don't like it, whatever, we still play. So many bands and uh, so different versions of punk, but uh, what do you feel like a uh, true message, punk message, and uh, what, uh, what is the definition of punk that uh, punk should represent in uh, this time zone? It kind of is, varies on the band. I think for Total Chaos, for me, I mean, I've always been pretty political for the most part, but I mean, sometimes I write fun songs. But I want to be as political. If I, I'm going to write fun songs, but I always have at least a few songs that are very, very personal. Like Wake Up America on the new album. It's just, America is kind of, uh, I don't know, man. They, 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 they seem to think that they rule everything. A lot of Americans never leave America. And if you ask anybody, every single American says America is the best country in the world. Ask them. Have you ever been outside of America? Oh, I was in Tijuana once or something like that. I'm like, that means still no, you've never been out of America. Uh, Middle <laughs> so, Mexico. Yeah. So it's, it's, they, it, when they leave, when Americans that leave a, Europe, go to Europe and other places like, like wherever, Australia, Canada, whatever, they, they figure it out that America actually isn't what it says it is. You know? America is not the freest country in the world. Far from it, by the way. It's it's not the greatest country in the world. I mean, there's some things that are cool. But. I mean, every place has its downfall. Right like, now, America is almost bankrupt. I mean, they had to borrow from China to survive. It's pretty sad. They've been borrowing from China over and over again. Actually, they they already estimate uh, China owns 40 percent of America, and uh, Saudi Arabia owns 8 percent. So who owns the rest? I don't know. A lot of bands here on the list, uh, when I asked them about the political stand, about the political one that should be given to the crowds also, to wake the crowds out uh, and, uh, and do something like a change of, uh, I don't know, mental state and uh, do something radical. Yeah, yeah, yeah people are wearing this. 
programmers. Yeah, but a lot of bands uh, try to uh, distance them, themselves uh, from uh, being political and uh, doing Because it hurts your career, it really does. It, being political, some people will talk shit about you. Some people will hate you. Uh, like, we started, we sang a lot of anti-fascist songs. We had, like, Kuba's Klan protests against us at shows in America. We had American Nazi parties trying to attack us. I got stabbed by Nazis because I got stabbed in the back and beat up big time. And when you're political, it's scary. You lose fans, you lose people that will buy your records, you lose people that won't support you because we talk shit about certain things, like certain politics. Even, even being political, not just racist political, like anti-racism like or anti-fascism like we are, even talking shit about the United States politics, government. I've had people back in the, like a couple of years ago write me messages saying, we're gonna kill you, America's the greatest country in the world, and all this crazy stuff on MySpace and stuff. You know, so I'm like, oh my God, are you crazy? Have you been anywhere? I wrote this one, I wrote several people and I said, have you been anywhere other than America? No, I won't, don't need to go anywhere because America's the greatest country in the world. So I so, said, oh, so you've never been anywhere, so that's how you know America's the greatest country in the world because you've never been anywhere but in America. And then I talk shit because I believe, I believe, I'm not saying Sean or whatever, I believe that even the 9-11 was done by America. I think Osama bin Laden had nothing to do with it. But a lot of people really, really, really freak out on this idea that I would say this. But I would say, if Osama bin Laden did do it, then why did they supposedly kill him and not take him to trial? They shot him. They could have arrested him and put him in, and put him in trial and showed the world that he did it. You know why they shot him? Or if they did shoot him? Because he didn't do it. That's why they needed to shut him up. Say, hey, if he says anything, then America's over. It's already over. America's over. It's done. It, it's going to change. They're already talking about changing America. They want to change it. It's going to be a different country. Let's say we're getting shot. <laughs> After the reign of uh, stupidity of uh, George Bush, uh, you got to change. First uh, black president of the United States of America. So many racist people hate him. They want him dead, dude. And so many. Even my own father thinks wants him dead. It sucks because he has to clean up like George Bush. Yeah, everybody blames everything, the problems on him, but actually George Bush is the one really the problem. George Bush and his father. His father started this whole disaster from the get-go 20 years ago. His father did, George Bush Sr. You know, he started 20 years ago. We were in the Gulf War and all that crap. He started 20 years ago, and then, and then Bush just continued with his father's. You know, you know, Clinton didn't really do much. Clinton was Mr. Cool Guy for most people. You know, well, the guy that had sex with his secretary. <laughs> <laughs> and all the world knew about it. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares, man? It yeah. just sucks that Obama has to be the one to clean it up because. It's a big responsibility, especially since he's the first black president in America. Everybody. Everybody's putting a lot of pressure on him before that. And I think it's really, really messed up that they're, that he's the one that has to do it. You know, and I don't know. I don't think it's fair, at all, man. It, he can't do it. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. No, he's not gonna be able. To, he's gonna be. He's gonna be out next election. He's out, but it doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with him. And even if he was to do with him. He's got all these people pulling strings on him anyways, you know. He was put in the office to try to save America's image to uh, Europe and everywhere else. Uh, how do you feel about the change of uh, mentality, perhaps? Uh, mental state of, uh, of the states uh, after the election of Obama? Well, I think it's bullshit because everybody was... I heard, not even just from white people, I heard from lots of Mexican people and lots of... Uh, Asian people talking nothing but shit because he's black or half black or whatever. Nothing but shit. It's a total shame, dude, that people look at the guy's skin color and judge him on his skin color. But unfortunately... It's a pretty common thing everywhere, actually. Black people are 
of African American people are everywhere in America, and they're everywhere, and there's not they're they're the same as everybody else. I mean, sometimes they can be different because of their neighborhoods, just like anybody. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't believe in you know race of people being a certain way. They're they're conditioned a certain way. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not racist. I hate everybody. <laughs> well, Miguel is Mexican American. You know, his mom and dad are both from Mexico, so you know, there it goes. And California is literally half Mexican, anyways. You love Mexico. <laughs> and Sean is half German American. You know, and I'm a lot of different uh, nationalities mixed up together. That's uh, that's what should uh, represent the United States of America. Um, of America. Nothing but yeah, that's without what it was. color, without yeah, uh, exactly. religious beliefs, uh, without anything. Just uh, being American and uh, uh, represent something like a good good cause, like a good start for all world. That's that was the idea, but I mean, yeah. it's obviously. Not <laughs> it's, good, it's good in theory. It looks good on paper. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I always talk so much shit about the conditions in America, and I always get a lot of shit from a lot of people because of it. Um, or whatever. I got people that don't like me because they think I'm anti-American, but I'm not anti-American. I'm just anti-government. I'm anti our own government. I just don't believe in it. Anymore. Anti-American. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I am American, so how can I be anti myself? Yeah, he hates himself. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like our government. I think the government needs to go. And Thomas Jefferson, long time ago, said one of the guys who signed the Constitution, you know, ended up becoming president. He said, when the rich take over a government, that the government, the people need to take the government back. But America hasn't done this yet. People need to take the government back. It's got to be overrun. A, a lot of work to do about it. Uh, so before we conclude the interview, I'm eager to listen about the short-term and the long-term plans of you guys. You are now on the tour. You are now in the Europe, uh, representing a new new record and uh, also uh, bothering uh, with uh, with with dishes. I uh, know with. Uh, um, it's getting closer also to some new European fans you also have to gain here. You all, you all gain, oh, I just mixed all together. Uh, therefore, let's, uh, let's conclude it with uh, short-term and uh, long-term plans for a band. Uh, short-term plans? We're just going to finish this tour, which we only have seven more shows yeah, left. We've been here for five oh. weeks. So. Yeah, seven more shows. Long-term plans? We're coming back. Uh, we already got plans. Maybe sure April. Again. We're thinking about April. April. The With another band from America, old band, even older than us, uh, ten years older than us, and the Saints. Yeah, the Saints. Do that and, double package. <laughs> and uh, maybe whatever. I don't know. Uh, the new album's out. I don't know if we're gonna record a new record anytime next year. I don't know. Maybe we will. I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, I have a new ideas for songs, but it kind of depends on what happens. You know, in the meantime. But like me and Sean have been working together, writing songs now 17 for 17 years. years, you know. Sean joined joined the band in uh, at the end of 94, early 95, and uh, me and him basically became the songwriters of the band until now. Before it was a combination of different people, but now it's just, oh, well, me and other people, but now it's just been me and Sean mostly. Nowadays, but you know, Miguel joined the band a year ago, and we'll see what he comes up with. <laughs> Keep on rocking, man. In the free world.